Everybody, Pastor Heather here, Clarksville First United Methodist Church. I am glad that each one of you are here and I want to welcome you, all of you, in the name and in the love and in the power of Jesus the Christ. I want to welcome you especially to today's service of worship because today is a bit of a different kind of service. Um, today I am offering to you a service of word and prayer. If you've not ever heard of a service of word and prayer, that's okay. It is pretty much what it sounds like it is. It is a service of worship to God in which we will both have God's word spoken to God's people and have the prayers of God's people spoken to God. And I figured this was a good Sunday uh, to offer this type of special service um, because in light of everything that's happening in our world today, in light of the fact that we went from having a global pandemic to a pandemic that's um, quieted in a lot of areas, but now is erupting in different areas, I, I just feel like this is the perfect time to offer a prayer service. Because if there's anything that our world and our nation and our community and our churches need, it is to be covered in prayer right now. Amen. And so that's what our service is all about today. It is about prayer. And I want us to begin this service with a special video I found online this week that is all about the power of prayer. It is a wonderful video, and I hope and pray it will bless you. Um, after the video, I am going to lead us in a reading of God's Word from Psalm 143, and then I will lead us in praying prayers, a focused prayer, to the Lord our God Almighty. At the end of the service today, we'll be blessed by hearing Mr. Robert Frost sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which is an amazing prayer hymn and a beloved hymn to so many. And so if you're ready, we will begin our service now by me lighting a candle to remind us of the presence of Christ with us as we worship and as we pray. Prayer, the very idea seems audacious, revolutionary, full of wonder and mystery, an invitation to speak to God, to seek, to knock, to ask, like a little child climbing into Father's arms. Prayer is an intimate and personal experience. It's about opening your heart to a loving God, a good Father, the one who truly knows you and truly loves you. Prayer is trusting Him with your worries and fears, your hopes and dreams, your needs and desires. It's about carrying all life's burdens, big and small, before the throne of God and resting in the limitless peace of His extravagant grace. So pray without ceasing. Pray for each other as you would pray for yourself and praise Him for His faithfulness because there is power in prayer. I just have to tell you, I really, really love that video. It's probably my favorite video I have ever found to share in a worship service about the power of prayer. And so I hope it was a blessing to you. And you know, one of the things I think I love the most about that video is the fact that this narrator describes how prayer works and how we feel in the midst of prayer and how crucial prayer really is. And one of the things that he said that really caught my attention was he said that prayer is full of wonder and mystery. And I find that to be so true. Tr prayer really is mysterious when you think about it. Like, we don't fully understand how it is that when people pray, miracles occur. 
we don't fully understand, probably can never totally comprehend how it is that when we are um, so filled with anxiety or grief or worry, that when we begin to pray, those negative emotions literally get replaced with the peace that surpasses all understanding. And I hope and pray that you have experienced that in your prayer time before, because it is a feeling like no other. It is really mysterious how it happens. I think about a time when it was about three months after my dad died and the grief of losing him had really begun to sink into my consciousness. And I was watching a TV show one night in my apartment in Hot Springs where a daughter crawled into the lap of her dad and began to hug him and he began to hug her. And that made me so incredibly sad all of a sudden. And I remember being overwhelmed to the point of tears. And then the, the more I cried, the harder I cried. And the harder I cried, the harder I cried. And before I knew it, I was crying from a place in the depths of my soul that I did not even know existed. Like I had never felt that kind of depth of pain and grief before. But as the, pray, as the crying subsided, I began praying. I took some time to take some deep breaths, to center my mind on Christ, and then I just began to pray, praying and telling God how grateful I am that I had a father like I did, how grateful I am that he now lives in eternity and can worship at the throne of grace. I began to um, tell God how sad I am and to ask God to help me to really feel that sadness because I needed to feel it but also then to let it go and to place that sadness into God's hands and ask him to replace that with the peace that surpasses all understanding. And in some mysterious, inexplicable way, in those moments as I was praying, that grief lifted. Now that's not to say it ever, never came back again, right? Because I grieved for my dad um, many, many, many months actually probably over a few years, if I'm honest. Um, but in the moments that I felt that anxiousness and that sadness and that grief, I just tried to center myself and pray and peace mysteriously overcame me time and time again. And that's the power of prayer. Another thing that the uh, narrator says, in, said in that video is that Prayer is this opportunity we have, each of us, to intimately connect with our Creator, our Father in Heaven, and this time um, that we can lay down all of our burdens, our worries, our griefs, our overwhelmingness, whatever it might be, to take our burdens and just lay them at the altar of grace, at the throne of God. Now, how often... In this life, do we actually get to just take all of the stuff that we're carrying around that's weighing us down and just hand it over to somebody? It doesn't happen, right? Other people can't take that pain away. They can listen, they can empathize, but they can't take that pain away. In prayer, however, in some wonderful, mysterious way, we are able to take our worries and our burdens and lay them before the throne of grace and we don't have to pick them back up. We can leave them in the hands of the one who created the heavens and the earth and set the stars in motion in the sky. And if he can't handle them, I don't know who can. This is another beautiful thing about prayer. Prayer is, as the narrator said, it is seeking, it is knocking, I believe prayer is also trusting and believing. It is strengthening when we pray. We are empowered when we pray. And prayer gives us life. And so today, that's what I want us to do. I want us to pray together. But before we begin our intensive prayer time, our focused prayer time, I want to begin by sharing with you from the Word of God a few verses out of Psalm 143. It'll be verses 1 through 8. Um, they're beautiful verses, and they have a lot to say to us about. Actually, it's a model for prayer. And so um, listen now for the Word of God. I'll be reading today 
from the New Revised Standard Version. And in fact, I'm reading from a Bible that my dad bought for me when I left uh, for seminary. So, hear now the word of God from Psalm 143. The psalmist says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me, my heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old, I think about all your deeds, I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now let us pray together to the Lord God Almighty. Would you pray with me? Let's bow our heads. Gracious, holy, and life-giving God, as the psalmist has taught us, in Psalm 143, we humbly ask you, Lord, to hear our prayers and give ear to our supplications. We begin our prayer this morning, Lord, by thanking you that you do not count our sins against us because of the sacrifice of Christ. And that you hear our prayers and that you care about us praying and lifting up our burdens to you. And so, Lord, as we pray for your answers today to our prayers we pray through and in the name of Jesus the Christ. In so many ways right now, Lord, it feels as though the enemy is indeed surrounding us, crushing us, pursuing us relentlessly, as the psalmist said. It feels like the enemy is seeking to crowd out the light and the joy in our lives. Our hearts, they feel so heavy at times, Lord. As we contemplate all of the sickness and the death in our land and across the world. Our spirits faint within us, God. As we wrestle in our minds with the ideas of justice and injustice and, and intolerance and hate and prejudice and greed and all the ills that plague us as a human race, Lord. And yet we know that when our hearts are troubled, we need only turn to you. When our spirits feel faint, we need only begin uttering our grievances to you, Lord. And so today we pause and we remember the promises contained in your holy word. We remember all of the good you have done, all of your mighty deeds on behalf of your people. And we meditate, Lord, upon your goodness your mercy, and your loving grace. And as we lift our heads and hearts and voices to you in prayer, at this time, Lord, we entrust our cares to you into your very capable hands. We lay our burdens down before your throne of grace, and we ask you to listen and to hear and to answer. Lord, hear our prayers for our world and particularly for our nation that is under siege by this virus. Lord, we ask for you to be near to those who are caring for the sick. We ask you to help and guide those who are working on therapeutics and vaccines. We ask you, Lord, to give clear vision to those watching the spread of the virus and measuring every single trend when we ask you, Lord, also to give wisdom to those who are making decisions, sometimes with limited information about how to best proceed for the sake of the goodness and the health of their people under their care, under their watch, Lord. We pray for them all. 
And Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayers for your holy church, not just in Clarksville, but throughout the world. We ask that you would grant us grace to do our very best to protect our most vulnerable. Lord, we beseech you to give us insight into how we can be the church in this new normal. We ask you to bless us with compassionate hearts so that we're sure to see the needs of others around us, Lord, and to meet them in their needs. And we ask you to give us patience to endure these present hardships that have been placed upon us. And Lord, we also ask you to hear our prayers for the social and cultural and political landscape of our nation right now. Lord God, help us to always see one another just as you see us, as your precious children. As precious children who are worthy of dignity and respect. And help us, Lord, to always treat one another the way we want to be treated. Make us better examples, Lord, for the generations to come in terms of division and violence and justice and equality, Lord. Help us to set a better example so that people have us to look up to. Give us the grace to do better, God, at living our daily lives as you call us to live them in ways where we show kindness every single day, where we are merciful to others where we are willing and ready and able to extend forgiveness to others as we have had forgiveness extended to us. And we ask, Lord, that um, you would make us better at being gracious to others because you were always so gracious to us. We ask us, Lord, to teach you, teach us to do your will we ask you to lead us in the paths of righteousness, to guide us in glorifying you with our words and our deeds. And Lord, most of all, we ask you to be near to us today, tomorrow, and always. Because you are our refuge and our strength and our very present help in times of trouble. Lord, we pray all of these things in the name of the triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen and Amen. I pray that this service of worship, this time of prayer, has indeed blessed you. And I pray for all of us to keep up our prayer lives, to take that seriously because there is wonder, there is mystery, and there is power in prayer. Amen. sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and tribulations? Is there trouble any? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus. 
Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Comfort with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our Despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. And now our benediction. May the Lord our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you this next week, be ever present with you, be a faithful and kind friend to you, and may the Lord send you out in his name to do his will. Go in the peace of God, and may the peace of God go with you. Amen.